wicked men his wrath shall see. Where shall I be? And to the rocks and mountains flee. Where shall I be? When hills and mountains flee away. Where shall I be? All the work, work of men decay. Where shall I be? Oh, where shall I be? When the first song is out. Where shall I be? When it's out so loud. When it's out so loud. As to the top of the world. Where shall I be? When it's out. When heaven and earth are some great scroll. From God's angry presence grow. Where shall I be? When all the saints redeem shall turn. Where shall I be? Forever blessed as God's right hand. Where shall I be? Oh, where shall I be? When the first trumpet sound. Oh, where shall I be? When it sounds so loud. When it sounds so loud. As to wake up. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet, please. As we close our eyes, I raise up our two hands to the Lord and sing this song loud and clear. Holy Ghost, you hear our giving. You hear our giving in my life. Savior, 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 Savior. 
Savior, 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 Jesus, 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 Hallelujah. Great 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 I was lost, but uh, Jesus found me. I found me. I found me. I found me. I God is Righteousness, but by his grace alone, it's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. Oh, I'm complete. Oh, yes, complete. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh, yes, hallelujah. Send that fire, the Holy Ghost. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire, the Holy Ghost. 
send the fire. Fire burn him in my soul. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Pentecost and fire. Fire burning in my soul. Fire burning in my soul. Fire burning in my soul. Holy Ghost and fire. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh Lord God, uh, that has made the earth and the earth and thy great power. Lord God, that has made the heavens and the earth by the house. Nothing is too difficult for me. Huh? Hallelujah. Nothing is too difficult for me. Hallelujah, great and mighty God, great and counsel, mighty indeed, mighty indeed, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is to be for me. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all, hallelujah. Anything to have for me. Hallelujah. Is there anything, anything, anything to have for me? Is there anything, is there anything to have for me? Hallelujah. Is there anything, anything, anything to have for is there anything? Is there anything to add? Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I've been to Calvary. I dip my hand in the blood of the Lamb. I drink the blood of Jesus. My life has been made. I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. Hallelujah. I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My life has been made. My life has been made old. My life has been made. My life has been made old. My life has been made old. My life has been made old. My life has been. I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. My in the blood of the Lord, hallelujah, the blood of Jesus, my life has been made. The fullness of the God that bodily dwelleth in the Lord, the fullness of the God that bodily dwelleth in the Lord, the fullness of the God that bodily dwelleth in the Lord, oh, uh, complete, oh yes, complete, uh, oh yes. Oh yes, complete Hallelujah. Oh yes, oh yes, complete Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for tonight. And we thank you for your children you are brought here by your power. Thank you, Lord, because we can rely on your power every day. Thank you because it is the only power that never fails. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we are gathered before you at this revival hour, the first this month. Meet your people at the point of their needs. Lay your hands upon everyone gathered here. 
Let there be no one here tonight who will go on with a plastic experience. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Let's take a Bible. God bless you. Tonight, we are looking at what I call radical Christianity. Radical Christianity. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, verse 6. Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, verse 6. Radical Christianity. Acts 17, 6. If you are there, say, yes, I'm there. Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, verse 6. Amen. The book of the Acts of the Apostles paints a very clear picture of what Christianity is supposed to be. The book of the Acts of Apostles opens to us an arena of spiritual excitement and where we are supposed to work. The book of the Acts of Apostles, which can also be called the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit, makes it clear to us that the church of God it's not supposed to be a boring place. It's not where you come, you find what they are doing boring and you prefer to be in a, in a drinking place or in a party. Right from the beginning of the book of Acts of Apostles from chapter 1 to the last, there are very exciting things happening. That, what they practiced was radical Christianity. Unfortunately, I'm very sad. Our Christianity is far, far, far away from what they had. In fact, some of the anointing and the, and the spirit with which they move, we have not even discovered it. Some of us who are calling ourselves pastors now, perhaps if you were in the book of Acts of Apostles, they would just make you a cleaner. If a powerful person like, like Stephen, who preached that powerful message in Acts chapter 7, and the Bible says signs and wonders were happening in his hand, if the post they could give to him was an usher, Means that majority of us who call ourselves group leader pastors, as far as Acts of Apostles is concerned, were not qualified. They're just not qualified. That's the truth. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down. I come either also. They turn the world upside down. They turn it down. Make it, they put the head down. They put the leg up. That was the nickname of the early Christians. They turn their own world upside down. They made a difference. They made an impact. By radical Christianity, we mean crude Christianity. Primitive Christianity, ancient Christianity, early Christianity, original Christianity, unrefined Christianity, uncivilized Christianity. Christianity where there is less noise but greater effect. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there is a serious problem with the church of today. And unless by divine intervention or we pray some serious prayers, many of us will not see any revival before we die. This present generation has really not experienced any revival. So these men that have turned the world upside down, they have come here also. When you cannot even turn the house, you are upside down. What are we talking about the world? We need to go back to that radical Christianity now. You can see where our ice cream Christianity has led us. Our liberal Christianity, you can see where it has taken us. Preachers are caught committing fornication. Pastors are stealing. Pastors are going to native doctors. Members are not serious. Some cannot pray. Some cannot read their Bible. Some come to the house of God dressed like Jezebel. You can see where it has taken us now. We need to go right back. 
with that radical Christianity, Bible Christianity, ancient Christianity, original Christianity, unrefined Christianity. In a particular village in the southwest in those days, the most powerful man in town was a witch doctor. Feared and respected. Very powerful. So powerful, this man would do juju for people. And the juju would be talking. The juju is talking. So he was feared in that village. He served idol. He served Shango. There was a time there was no water in the village. The river was dry. This man said he will make rain fall and he will bring the river, river back. And the whole village took after him. And he took them to the dry bed of the river. Uttered some incantation. Did certain rituals. Now I told them that before they move from here to the next place, rain will have fallen, river will be back. And it happened like that. He was terribly feared. And he was now in charge of the village, including the king. Very soon, some people got born again in that village. They got born again correctly. They became radical Christian. They became Christian that is called Christian. They now decided, say, ah, our village cannot be under the control of this man. The Bible said, Jesus shall reign. So how can this man be controlling this village? So they decided to challenge his authority. One day, thunder struck in the marketplace. And two, two cows died. And when thunder strikes like that, animals are dead. The man will come and carry it. That was his food. Nobody dares touch those animals. So anytime the man was hungry or he want to eat meat, want to eat anything, he sends thunder to the market to kill things. I will go and pick it up. So that day, he sent the thunder to the market as usual. And two big cows were there. And people, of course, ran away. They said, Baba Shango is coming to pick it. These believers now went there. And they said, no, you will not pick these cows. We are going to bury them. They are died. They don't belong to you. And nobody wants to buy them. We shall bury them. The man said, no, you can't bury it. You shall bury them. And those believers buried the cow by force. And the man said, you shall see. He ran quickly to his shrine. Why the Christians were sitting in the marketplace? Two believers. Two believers. Right there in broad daylight. The bomb of thunder of fire was coming from the shrine of that man. I was coming towards this man. These two men of God. Christians. They're not pastors. I was coming towards them. People in the market ran away. Hey, hey. Baba Shango is attacking them. As this thing was coming, the man said, ah, where are you going? In the name of Jesus. Just follow my finger. Follow it. And the thing was following. Follow it. And they redirected it back to where it came from. And the thing went back to the man to strike in his camp was the first time somebody challenged the authority of Baba Shongu. Later, Baba Shongu came to the marketplace and said they wanted to offer sacrifices. The young men in the village, they gathered. Said, Look, sir. Get out! This was a man they could not talk to before. Say, get out! Say, you are talking to me like that? I will say thunder. Thunder. Was that not the thunder you said the other day? There's somebody with one finger, one finger. One finger. It's directed it like this. What thunder are you talking about? That was how this man was disgraced out of the village. And the devil lost the battle in that village. And the village came under the control of Christ. That is Christianity. That is what they call Bible Christianity. I want you to understand this very well. Our early fathers, they closed down altars. They spoke to shrines and the shrines caught fire. They closed down the clinic of witch doctors. But we're not moving at all. I'm praying that there will be somebody here. There will be somebody here tonight. Who will say, I am tired of my spiritual powerlessness. And I want power that cannot be insulted. If you are that person, can I hear you shouting a loud amen? <laughs> say, my father! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and decree loud and clear. 
Masapiali katanda ya boshende raba. It is very dangerous for you to go home with a plastic experience from here. In Jesus name we pray. Listen and listen to me clearly. More than at any time in the history of the world, men and women are going into the occult. They are doing strange things in the occult. More than at any time in the history of the world, men and women are acquiring strange powers. There is only one organization, there is only one body that can address this rage of Satan. It is the body of Christ. Because it is only unto that body that God said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. And it says, Nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is Bible Christianity. Bible Christianity. Radical means departing from the usual or customary. Radical means favoring revolutionary changes. Apostolic Christianity was never intended to be a religious experience. Apostolic Christianity is not a religion of a tall, heart, big gown, giant cross on your neck and big candle at your front. No, it's not. Some who call themselves apostles, the only reason they call themselves apostles is because of the tall heart. Jesus and his disciples, they instituted Christianity from the beginning to be a radical lifestyle. Unfortunately, the sad thing is that today, the church is filled with people who believe that you can do anything you want, you got this in your heart, not outside. And so it's now so, so difficult to differentiate those who are children of God and children of Satan. Radical Christianity is root Christianity, root, root. It is radical in nature. It is original Christianity. Radical Christianity is believing God for the supernatural. Christianity is a supernatural thing. A supernatural thing. I want you to understand this very well. It was in one of our churches in the north. There was Islamic riot and they were killing people, doing all kinds of things. By the time they surrounded at our church, only one sister was in church that day, an Igbo woman. She saw them through the window with cutlass and everything. And she opened the window and saw them. And they said, come out, you are, you are dying. The woman said, no, you made a mistake. The Bible says, I shall not die but live to declare the works of God. Say right now. I am warning you, go away. Leave me alone. Because if I start praying here now, that is a God you may not know about. His name is called the God of Elijah. He will fight. The church towards her instead. She raised her voice. She said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? All these people fall down and die. The leader fell down first. Grabbed his tummy. It was kind of stomach trouble. Another person fell down. The rest picked the around. That is Bible Christianity. It's a supernatural thing. It's not Bible Christianity when you are so powerless and weak. They are just, the, the spirit husband will come and deal with you terribly. They will fight you terribly. They will use you, you on you. It will work. It is not Christianity. A radical Christianity war befalls anybody that is contending with you. Because your God will contend with them and the battle will be serious. When we get into the kind of Christianity we should get to, who will look at us and say, you are, you are crazy. You are a mad person. I say, look at you. You are, you are strange. Exactly. That's what we are meant supposed to be. We are supposed to be strange. Peculiar. Difficult to decode. They wonder, what kind of people are these? What kind of person is this one? <sighs> Radical Christianity. I was teaching in school many years. One day as I was teaching in class, one madam was shouting outside. Biology teacher, come out, oh. Come out, oh. I want to report one of my daughter to you. Come and listen whether this thing is good. Come out, oh. biology teacher, oh. Come out. 
So I went out. She now called her daughter. And she said, look at this. Look at this. I said, yes. I said, sir, we do respect. Is she not a beautiful girl? I said, yes. Just look at her. Look at the, look at the dresser. Her friends are making up. She's not making up. Her friends are wearing chains. She's not wearing chains. Her friends are wearing nice clothes. Look at how she's dressed. Her friends are wearing trousers. Look at how she's dressed. And this is an intelligent girl. Our friends are going about with girlfriends, boyfriends. They are giving money to their parents. This one is a poverty in our house. I said, teacher, is this good? <laughs> well, she didn't know who she was talking to. And I said, mommy, is it good if she got pregnant and you don't know the owner of the pregnancy? I said, that one is not so good. I said, she is a child of God. And this is how God wants her to be. She now looked at me and said, I want to you know. Yeah, part of the part of it. She hissed at me and turned back. Me and the sister will walk back to class. Walk back to class. When you encounter God, I didn't say when you encounter a, a crusade, a congress, a convention. Mm. When you encounter God, or God encounters you, something must happen. Your life must radically change. It is when God turns your own life upside down. It is then you can go and turn the world upside down. The trouble is that God has not even succeeded in turning us at all. So we cannot change our world. Anytime, I don't like talking to the press. Anytime they want to ask questions, say, there are so many churches in Nigeria. Why are we not making impact? The reason we are not making impact is because the Christianity we are practicing is not radical. The kind of Christianity that is needed is not what we are practicing. It's not that kind at all, at all, at all. And so, we call ourselves salt, but we are not able to salt anything. We call ourselves light, but the person who is calling herself light, as sugar daddy, boyfriend, girlfriend, which light are you? By darkness. They are darkness people. And they come to pollute our primitive, pollute our gradient. The people gathered in the upper room, they are just 120 persons. That is, with that, 120 with fire. They turn their environment upside down. Upside down. And this is a serious problem. I'm praying once again that there will be somebody in this meeting tonight who will be divinely dissatisfied. Who will say, Father, I am not leaving your presence until you fill me with power that cannot be insulted. For a long time, voices of witchcraft have been heard. For a long time, the witches in your household have been reigning. For a long time, Somebody with uh, all kinds of fetish power is being promoted. You are not promoted. For a long time, the enemy has been stealing from you. Because you do not have the power to contend with them. The great apostle, Joseph Babaola, was invited to a palace. The palace of a king. The king said, man of God, you say you want to do crusade in this town. With which power do you want to do it? Say, Look at this man. And the man removed a cutlass and was shaking the cutlass like this. And the cutlass, no electricity, no fire. This, the cutlass was removing fire, was sparkling with fire in the hand of the man holding it. So, man of God, you see, this is power. But he found that the man was not impressed at all. Looking at the king and the man with the cutlass. And I said, is that why you brought me a cabbage? It's okay. You cutlass. He had the word of the Lord. Shut up. And the fire made web. The owner issued incantation, no fire. King said, ah, 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 don't disgrace me, talk, ah, don't be fire. They became film show for the man of God was looking at this. And such a way, thunder struck. The thunder struck a mighty tree in the marketplace. And the tree fell down and dried up. For the first time, the principality ruling the town was disgraced. Can you raise up your right hand? So my fire! Empower me now! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare. Somebody must raise up his voice tonight so that the power will come upon you. This is not a night to negotiate. Open your mouth, open your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Now listen, listen. If we refuse to collect the correct power.
power and become radical in our Christianity. The Almighty only has two alternatives. Just two alternatives. One, persecution to drive us out. Or problems to harass us. So the reason some people are having trouble is not because they are supposed to have trouble. It's because God wants them to increase their level of power. There are people who would never have come to this kind of church if the enemy did not pursue them. Thank God that that enemy pursued you and pursued you into your breakthrough. So, method number one is God will raise persecution or raise trouble for you. Alternative number two is substitution. God just replaces the person. Anytime a generation does not carry out what God wants them to carry out, what it does is to kill them off and replaces them. I pray that the Lord will not use stone to replace us. But if we do not do what he wants us to do, we are either calling for trouble or we are calling for substitution. Trouble, persecution, or God will say, change this one. Change this one. The mountain of fire and miracles ministry does not intend, does not want to modernize Christianity. We can use modern methods to reach people, but we are not ready to modernize the Christianity. We can buy the equipment to reach others, but we cannot modernize the messages. Why? Because God cannot be modernized. Ah, you say, out of why I don't like this place? It's because you people are so, so old-fashioned. Unfortunately, God too is old-fashioned. The Bible calls him the ancient of days. It's an old-fashioned person. He says, of all that has made the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. He said, they shall wax old, but thou remain it, and thy years change it not. God cannot be modernized. In the olden days, radical Christianity, women covered their hair when they came to church. No one wanted to display their hair styles. No woman there comes into the sanctuary of the Almighty wearing trousers or a man wearing women's clothes. No man had chains on. Humility will be written all over them. All they are singing, they do the singing from the heart. And inside the service, apart from the preacher, spiritual gifts flowed. So anybody who is interested in practicing liberal and compromising Christianity, the MFM is the wrong place to come. There are plenty of churches and the who are ready to welcome liberal Christianity, compromising Christianity, Christianity with plenty, plenty wives, plenty, plenty girlfriends, drinking your beer and soaking your tea in the beer and smoking in their head. Plenty of churches are taking them. Not here. But not here. Not at all. The present day believers, they are yet to even discover the route by which the apostles walked let alone walking therein. Many who call themselves pastors are pastors of their stomach, pastors of their bank manager, not pastors of Christ. The present day believers, they do not wish to look different from the world. They find it so hard to discard their makeups and their jewelries. They try to correct God by coloring their lips that God, I want these lips red. Why did you make it like this? I'm coloring their fingernails. God, why did you not change the color of this? My fingernails to become danger. You say spirit husband are running after you, and then you are painting your legs red. They will continue to run after you. The preference day believers try to copy the hair texture that God did not give to them. Many places they wear kind of clothes that are revealing and sexy. The present day believers in most places they are not ready to sweat in prayers. In fact, we thank God for the prayer revival introduced by the mountain of fire, introduced by the mountain of fire now. That's what makes some people at least sweat a little bit during prayers. In those days, when things really got critical, we remove our shirt and put it down. Because it's prayer is battle. Jesus himself was sweating blood. So you can see what, what the, the intensity and the agony of his prayers. It is here we find people who want to copy the white man whose spiritual environment is different. The present day Christian is happy going around with not a single spiritual gift. Divine dream, you don't have. Vision, you can't see. Dream, nothing. You are just going about like that. Present day believers want to use, there is easier for them to tell lies to cover up when they've made mistakes. They are more worldly minded than heavenly minded. The present day believers are failed to climb the mountain of power that our early Pentecostals 
fathers climbed. I'm looking forward to that day when they will be bringing the sick, the dead, and they get to that gate and they meet an usher. And the usher says, Where are you going? So I want to take these people to the general of us. Let general of us pray for them. I say it's not necessary. Take them to the choir. The choir can handle this one. We're looking forward to that day. Whereas Christ turned water into wine. But we, the present day church, <laughs> we are trying to turn wine into water. And that is a serious problem. Many of the people who call themselves pastors, if they can just collect some small power, small power, that's all they need. And there will be an explosion. Unfortunately, the present day Christians, ministers and all, are powerless and spineless. Many are part time Christians. Only Christians in church, but not Christian outside. Only this radical Christianity can permanently affect people for Christ. I want you to understand this very, very well. We're not talking theories here. We're talking about the power of God. The correct kind of Christianity. Only this radical Christianity can work deep into people's lives and affect their foundation. Only that kind of Christianity. Beloved, it is a tragedy and a disaster that 90% of Christians who come to church are suffering from one oppression or the other. Suffering from one oppression or the other. And almost a larger percentage have to swallow drugs in order to be whole a little bit. Without that problem, Bible Christianity. I want you to know tonight that if it is the desire of your heart, I too want to be a world changer. I want to be an environmental transformer. All you need to do is to key into that arena of radical Christianity. I shared this some time ago, maybe here or at the youth church. It was the town called Oyo. Oyo was given to Islam. To compound the problem of Oyo is also the center of fetish power, magic, and all kinds of things. A demonic center in Yoruba land. There was a brother who got born again from Islam. And he used to preach about. And whenever he preaches, he will have a copy of the Bible and a copy of the Quran. We quote from the Bible, we quote from the Quran, and he will try to disprove one or the other. And trying to convince people to become Christians. He decided to go and hold a crusade in Oyo town. He hired the town hall. He got there. Began to preach. Bible and Quran together. The Muslims were gathered there. They were listening to him. The more he talked, the angrier they became. The more he talked, the angrier he became. He did not win one single combat. In fact, at a stage, police had to rescue him from their hands. Nothing happened. Then, another time, another man of God went to Toyota again. Rented the same town hall. He got there. This man of God was originally a mechanic. He read only primary six and ran mechanic and God called him. It is not your university degree that will give you power. Many university professors have been eaten by witchcraft. Many of them are even carrying sacrifice, doing all kinds of things about. At least I know a professor of chemistry who drank the urine of the native doctor. This man got to the town hall and he preached a short message. Very short message. I will now proceed to preach the message he preached. He said, brothers and sisters, in the beginning, God created a man and a woman and put them in a garden. And they were enjoying themselves in the garden. They had no problems. But after some time, the serpent, the Satan, came into the garden to deceive them. God now drove them out of the garden and put an angel with sword so that they won't find their way to the garden again. He said, since that day, problem had entered into the life of man. Sickness had entered into the life of man. All kinds of problems have gone into man as a result of being chased out of that garden. So God now looked again. First, sorry for them. But I created this one. They are having problems. He now decided to send his son to come and help them. You see, that son of God is like an elephant. And the human beings, they are like ants. You see that son of God who, who is like an elephant? Began to shrink, shrink. 
and shrink and shrink to the size of an ant so that it can minister life to them. So, you see that son of God, an elephant that become an ant, that is the one they call Jesus. And through his name, that is salvation. So, I will now proceed to pray on that name now. And you see what will happen. Say, so, rise up everybody. That was all. I'm just preaching someone. No subtraction, no addition. That's all he said. And he stood up. And he began to pray. They were not saying amen. They were not opening their eyes. They continued the prayer. But there was an Elijah man that was in that meeting. He had two sons who were deaf and dumb from birth. He brought them to the meeting to come and fight. As the man prayed, the first boy pulled his father. Here. Yeah. Uh-uh. He looked down. I made. They are talking. Or whatever name he called him. Second one pulled his head. Who? Say, hey, 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 hey. Ah. The second. They are talking. For the first time. He removed what he had on his head. This thing he wrapped on. The turban. He removed the turban. He looked at the man of God at the front. Everything the man was saying before was so angry. He was not even looking at him. He removed the thing. He said, now nah, this is power. He looked at the man of God at the front. People surrounding him. <laughs> Say, ah, what happened there? Say, your children, they are talking. They are talking. There was noise there. Right? There was noise in that zone. Because everybody knew that man in town and those children. When the fellow at the front, the mechanic, took an altar call. Baba Isaac and Ahmed was the first person at the front. Those who were living in their compound followed him. That is Bible Christianity. It's not a question of arguing with people. But now we have degenerated to that level where we can no longer demonstrate the power of God. Many will even come to church. There is someone, they are eating chingum. Some will be drinking the rest of their coke. They forgot in their bag. When the service is up. Some will be reading newspapers inside the church. That's how powerlessness is so terrible. Can you raise up your right hand again? Say, my father empower me in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to shout this prayer loud. Open your mouth, beloved. Receive the power. In Jesus' name we pray. Before 1840 AD, Nigerians worshipped idols. The Portuguese missionaries, they were the first person to come to Nigeria. They went to Benin City in the 16th century, but they were no match for the demonic stronghold present in Benin. It is unfortunate that Benin is still a demonic stronghold till now. Till now. It's very sad. So, deep Portuguese missionaries, they failed. They made no impact. In fact, they ran away. Then, 1842, Methodist Church came. That one landed in Badagri. And that place to now, another stronghold. I don't know what tailor these missionaries will be going to these strongholds. Up to now, Badagri is still a stronghold. And if you come from Badagri, please, or Benin, don't let anybody beg you before you go for deliverance. 1845, the Anglican church moved in. Okay, they touch Badagri, they touch Abekuta. Problem. You will notice that these early places they visited, there was no revival at all. The early missionaries did not make much impact in the spiritual life of the black people because they did not understand the local spiritual environment. While they did a very good job by bringing Western education, the spiritual problems of the people remained. They did not have a strategy to reach the local environment. So the people went to church and still worshipped their idols. They went to church, they kept their idols at home. There was even a situation in Ijebu land where an Anglican man was preaching. A priest. And he mentions that witches are going to hellfire. 
And three of them stood up. Uh -huh. Les noirs. You say that? You? When your mother, your mother is part of us. So you are finished. And the priest fell down. Died. This was what we were practicing before. And whenever these missionaries come, they say, we want to build a church. We want to build a church. Our kings with demonic intelligence will go and give them the forbidden forest to put the church. That's why you see most of those early churches, they remain tiny and small with cemeteries surrounding them. So you are going to church for salvation, they already remind you that you are going to die. There was only breakthrough when men, local men, collected the fire of the God of Elijah and they were able to challenge the powers ruling the environment. So if we must make a change in our lives, in our environment, in our country, we must go back to radical Christianity. Christianity that will move mountains, that will change things. Christianity, the kind of Christianity that caused confusion in Elisha in 1930. Now, when the man of God saw that the crowd was too many, he started praying on the river. The people of Elisha, they hated that river there. They didn't like that river at all. But the man prayed on it. And anyone who drank there got healed. They drank the river dry. They squeezed the mud to get water. People discharge their people from hospital and take them there. That is Bible Christianity. We must go back to that. If all of a sudden as I'm standing here, I say, just set the Lord. All of you who are fortunate to come to this Wednesday service, the Lord said that the food you are eating today, that's the last, the next Wednesday. That all of us here, seven days dry fast, till we meet next Wednesday. You'll find plenty of protest here. Some will say, ah, and I didn't want to come more. I didn't want to come today. That's just how weak we have become. Christianity in the original format cannot be changed or improved upon. Many of what we call liberality today is self-granted license to commit sin. Listen to me and listen to me well. The devil's crowd, they will agree to sleep in the cemetery for 201 days because they want power. But believers find it so difficult to attend night vigil prayer. And sometimes during the night vigil, once it's getting to around one two, three. When, is, when we start around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you will find plenty of people. But when it gets around one or two, including the man singing the Bayeti, I say, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> if it was a child of the devil that was looking for power, and he's supposed to see the cemetery 201 days, he will be more active. Because any demon can slap him in the night. A child of the devil agrees to abstain from sex for one year because he wants power. Then you find a believer running after his wife and the housemaid every day of the week. Every day, every day, every day of the week. A child of the devil agrees to go on 201 days fast in order to destroy lives. But the believers complain of hunger after 12 o'clock. Sometimes even when, before the fasting will start, some will have brought granite, roasted plantain, orange inside the bag. We're looking at his wristwatch. We're looking at the roasted plantain. We're looking at the wristwatch. At the roasted plantain. A child of the devil, you dare not disobey your boss. You dare not insult the senior witch doctor. You dare not. But the believer will be arguing with his pastor. Argue with the pastor. Radical Christianity, beloved, is aggressive. It has to be aggressive. Because it is carrying on warfare with unseen powers. And so when you are fighting, they think you are mad. Because you, you cannot see who you are fighting. The, the people that are looking at you cannot see who you are fighting. But you know you are fighting. Aggressive Christianity is carrying on warfare with unseen powers. But it is the only setup that can turn people from darkness to light. Two people came to me. They came to complain about certain things. And one of them had a live tortoise under his abada. As they were talking to me, he was beating it. He put his hand inside his abada. He was beating the tortoise. I was looking at them. When they finished, they were going away. I said, sir, 
that thing you are slapping there, you think if you can catch me, I will still be here? You think I will still be here? General Vice Martin of Fire, you are slapping useless tortoise. You think it, it will catch me? You say, I don't have any tortoise. I don't have any tortoise. I say, okay, can I remove your brother? I say, I know now. I... But, sir, ma, if you don't have the power of God, they can come to your shop wearing that abada and I will slap the tortoise and your words will not be coherent again. Everything you are doing becomes sluggish. They say, bring this, bring that. How much did you say you want to sell it? Say, it's 20 naira, sir. Say, I'll give you one naira. Say, yes, sir. How much do you want to buy that one? Because there is no fire, no power. What the Bible says? Say, all the enemies that come against you shall flee from before your face. If they come against you, in how many ways? They shall flee in how many ways? That's what the Bible says. If they are not fleeing, it is because there is no fire to terrorize and to chase them away. I pray that power that cannot be insulted, anointing that cannot be reproached, power that will put every enemy to flight, power that will bury serpents and scorpions, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it, 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 receive it. In the name of Jesus. Light I am a royal agenda. When we get born again, it's like a man leaving Egypt. Our exodus from Egypt must be as real as the exodus of Israel from Egypt. All Egypt knew that Israel had departed. There must be something about us that we tell the world that we don't belong to the same boat. Egypt for Christian is the world. You cannot mix Egypt with the promised land. If you come out of Egypt and Egypt is seeing you, you, you are still an Egyptian. Listen, beloved. External ornaments is not the glory of God. Not the glory of God. This is why it's so, so difficult to find sisters who are powerful in the Lord. Why? Many of the sisters prefer to live the lifestyle of the Egyptians. Most of the powerful women ministers you find around are old women. The young ones want to wear shoes to catwalk. No power. How many of the brothers? How many of them see visions and revelations? Majority are dream experts. Because part of them is still in Egypt. The truth has to be said, beloved. Spiritual things operate in level. Once the level of your consecration gets to a level, certain powers come into your life. You don't need to pray for them. Because heaven itself is looking for people who will receive the power of God. So once that consecration reaches a level, the power flows. But there is none. No matter how you pray, no matter how you sing, no matter how many anointing follow me, anointing follow me, and you are shaking your body as if something is falling. That just deceiving yourself. That is yourself. You are like that, my friend, who went to a spiritual church and they were beating drums. The first person was rolling on the floor. Second person, some started rolling on the floor. Third person was rolling on the floor. After the man beating the drum, threw the drum away, I was rolling on the floor. My friend was the only one sitting there looking at them. I said, ah, who not they say that I'm a demonic person like this? Everybody's rolling on the floor, and I'm still on my seat. So he decided to somersault and be rolling on the floor. Self-deception. Our early fathers who practiced radical Christianity, the spiritual climate of their meeting is striking. When you walk into their service, you know that something, something is different here. Our early fathers who practiced radical Christianity, they knew the spiritual content of their territory. So sometimes they pray with madness. Imagine that great apostle, Babalola, he went to a king to ask for a place to build church, and the king gave him the forbidden forest. Then they threw pregnant women who died with pregnancy, small children that died, where there's a mighty serpent ruling the forest. That's what they gave him. And the man, thank, he thanked the king profusely. The man of God thanked the king. Take thank you, sir. He said, how much are we paying, sir? He's free. I said, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. When he left the palace, 
the king and his wives loved. <laughs> Look at this man. He will not come back here. The man of God got to the forest, raised up his hand, started praying. Those that came with him, they started prayer. Not ice cream prayer. Not the kind of prayer you pray, your body is not on you are praying. When he laid the man said, Father, in the name of Jesus. They had legs of thousands of people running away inside the forest. They were colliding on each other. He makes one to understand that scripture. That said, let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered. They were running. But the people could not see who was running. And the serpent on the mountain dried up and died. The king was shocked that they took over the place. Those are the people that established Christianity. They contended aggressively with the heavens. When we talk about heavens, the people don't understand sometimes. They have an anointing that can shake citadels down. Their music is different from our music. We sing plenty songs, but there is no spiritual punch in them. We sing plenty songs, but the song carry no fire. Plenty of their olden day songs were not very nice songs. Their songs decree the will of God prophetically to happen with great fervency. And they are very confrontational in the spirit realm. They had high level of boldness. They confront the clad and shrines. And they are so highly committed. Those who had 15 wives gave up the 14 wives and married just one. The modern day Christian is looking for a second wife. When oh, you say, ah, but you already have a wife at home now. He said, it doesn't matter. We shall be very clever about it. God too understands that we are weak. These men attack the giants in the land. They are walking churches. The members go out to minister. They are very noisy, but they carry spiritual strength. They have fervent and militant prayer lives. When they are gathered in the prayer meeting, somebody goes to urinate before joining them again. So we kneel down and begin to ask for forgiveness of sin in case he committed sin before he came back. They know the word of God and the ways of God. And they are carriers of revival. These are the qualities of the radical Christianity that has practiced. The ball is in your court. Whether you want to die as a weak Christian, you want to die as an unknown Christian, you want to die and nobody can point to what you have done for the Lord, you want to exist, you are supposed to be a chain breaker, you have not broken your chain, let a little happy your family to break their chains. The ball is in your court. Make up your mind this day that you will change. You will change. Like I was saying on Sunday, just a little change in your life. Be what your destiny needs. But to be doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, and you're expecting different results, is madness. The same kind of prayer you are praying every night. You see what you are praying every night? You can't have heavenly visitation. No man or woman can become powerful without night prayers. Rise up your feet. These men who have turned the world upside down. See, they are here again to turn this place upside down. If you are here tonight and you are not even born again, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, do so quickly by raising up your right hand and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that short prayer with me, immediately we close, find a way to the altar. If you are here tonight, you know you are a sinner. You are still living in sin. The first thing to do, confess your sins before the Lord. The Lord will not anoint the goat. The Lord will only anoint the lamb. Ask the Lord to forgive you. This is not a day to just come here and be talking all kinds of things. It's a day to be honest with yourself. Young man, do you know that if the correct power of God is in your life, you cannot fail any examination again? Young woman, do you realize that if the correct power of God is in your life, that your family that they say the same thing is happening to all of them, your case will be different. Young man, do you know that if the correct power of God comes upon you, you will cross your Jordan and no power will pull you down. Ask me to forgive you. Any sin that will block you from power, any sin that will hinder you from the anointing, ask him to forgive you. It is important to do this one. Makapotali karibo sente aba dala katanda kaya boko shenta da sente ndeke ya boko sete ya. Something is already happened to one sister over there. The power of God is lifting her off her feet. 
Yes, to soak you with anointing. Amen. Now, you want to stand well, stand well. If it's a gear that will disturb you, remove it, put it down. This is not a prayer to joke with. But I have an information from everyone. As many as who pray this prayer with reckless abandon. Who will pray this prayer without caring whether anybody is looking at them? You, know, you can be praying and you are conscious that you are standing, you are praying, you are praying consciously. I don't want to pray too hard. If I pray too hard. I don't want to fall down. I don't, I don't want to disgrace myself here. Uh, you are like that. You are, far, you are far from power. When the power fell upon Saul, he threw him down from his horse. When the power of God falls upon you, anything can happen. So if you are just playing with style, with style, it's not with style, with style. It will not be the fault of this man of God who is telling you now that God is close to you there. Power from on high! Fall upon me now! In the name of Jesus!